Twisted Sniper 42 here at Sniper Scare Models. I'm um, just going to do a review on the Warrior MCV Iraq 2003 for mainly for um, our over the pond friend uh, Peter's Plastic. Um, how you doing, buddy? Um, good to see uh, that you're, you're enjoying the hobby. Um, anyway, let's get on with it. Um, it's by Academy, obviously, it's a static model, as we all know. Um, <clears throat> the kit number is 13201. Um, I'll give you a little bit of history. Uh, the Warrior was a track vehicle family of a series of British armoured vehicles, originally developed to replace um, the older FV430 series. Um, it started life as the MCV80 project um, and that branched out in the 70s. Uh, GK and Skanky stroke um, GK in defence uh, we basically won the um, production contract in the 80s. Um, GK in defence basically purchased BAE systems. Um, a to a to basically a total of uh, 789 FE 510s and variants were manufactured for the British Army, and um, 254 of the um, of a modified version, Desert Warrior, it was called, were produced basically for the Kuwaiti Army. Um, uh, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. It's an in infantry fighting vehicle. Um, the origin is obviously United Kingdom, the UK. Uh, service history is basically uh, 1988 and it's still to the present day um, being used. As I said, the designer is GK and Scan uh, Sankey uh, Defence. Um, basically, they manufacture it as well and BAE Systems, who obviously they own. Um, it has a weight of 25.4 tonnes, it's uh, 6.3 metres long. Uh, which for you guys over in the States is 20 feet and 8 inches and the width is 303 meters which is uh, what is that uh, 9 f 9 foot 11 uh, height is 2.8 meters fairly high <laughs> so that's 9 foot 2 inches um, the crew is basically 3 um, you get a commander the gunner the driver and you can also um, put 7 troops in as well um, the armour is uh, aluminium and uh, a pleat, I think it's called. Um, yeah, uh, the main armament is a 30mm uh, L21A1 Raiden cannon, which is basically the current version. Um, also has a 40mm CTA inter uh, International CT40 cannon, um, which they intend to upgrade at a later date. Uh, secondary is a is um, oh, an L941A coaxial, uh, 6.27, uh, sorry, 6.26 millimeters uh, chain gun. Um, the engine uh, basically is a Perkins, it's a V8 uh, Condor di diesel, it's uh, 550 horsepower. Um, a few guys over in the uh, Australia and that, it's, it's 410 kilowatts. Um, power to weight ratio is 23.5 horsepower per tonne. Suspension is based on torsion bars with hydraulic dampers. Uh, it has an operational range of 660 kilometers, uh, which is 410 miles. Uh, sp speed is uh, 46 miles an hour. Um, which is 75 kilometres an hour on road and uh, 50 kil kilometres an hour off road which is what that, 32 I think something like that um, what else do you really need to know um, oh, what do you really need to know <laughs> I've told you most of it um, oh, uh, Combat history, I suppose. Um, the combat history of the vehicle is obviously Operation Granby, which was the Gulf War. 
um, United Nations duties in Bosnia with uh, the UN uh, Pro 4. Uh, also Operation Telek uh, 2003, 2003, which was the invasion of Iraq, which is this one itself. And then Operation Herrick, uh, which was Afghanistan with the ISAF. Um, I mean, protection against small arms, missiles, rockets, propelled grenades, uh, anti-tank mines were shown during the UN op operations in Bosnia. Uh, two warriors were destroyed during the first Gulf War, with nine soldiers killed um, in friendly fire incident when hit by a, a, an AGM-65 Maverick, excuse me, launched in error. Sorry, guys, by <laughs> an American A-10 Thunderbolt II. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but you know. These things happen, I suppose. Um, also, as of November uh, 2008, 22 soldiers have basically been killed while travelling in in it um, in in Afghanistan or Iraq. So it's quite a high toll. Um, 2012, six British soldiers were killed in it in, uh, in an explosion. Uh, that was in Helmand. Uh, province. Um, what else do you really want to know? <laughs> um, uh, what else do you really want to know? There's not really a lot to say uh, other than uh, basically that in, in two, uh, October 2011 uh, the, the Warriors upgrades would proceed at a cost of £1 billion extending the service of life of the Warrior to, basically to 2040 and beyond. So this is going to see probably a lot more, if not combat, the way things are going these days. Um, it was definitely going to be in service for a fair while. Uh, the schedule in service for up, upgrades is basically next year. Um, it will provide Lockheed Martin UK form. Uh, Martin UK with a platform management software to control systems to improve operation effectiveness. Uh, also, um, it's basically it, in 2015 it had a whole new turret which uh, was built for the WCSP. Anyway, that's enough guff on this rubbish. Um, I don't know if some of you guys, you know, enjoy all that stuff. Um, I probably got some of it wrong, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but anyway guys, um, I'll turn the camera around and let's have a look at the kit. Right, here we go guys, let's get this top of this off. Well, I've opened it, cheeky little up. Um, We've got the uh, the manual, instruction manual, which basically goes through the steps. So we've got wheel assemblies going in there onto the, the hull. Uh, we then got the rear hatch, which actually, by the way, the rear hatch is actually hydraulic um, to let the troops in and out. Uh, anyway, yeah, you don't need to know that. Putting the tracks on, I can't say as I'd probably be doing that, and the front fenders, I can't say as I'd be doing that. Putting the tracks on though. Um, it's quite a simple build. Um, you're putting the upper hole on and the details on the upper hole. Uh, again, rear hatch parts uh, and some bits and pieces. Uh, not sure whether they're optional or not. I'll have to read into that. Um, again, hatches. Uh, I like the additional mirror for seeing behind when the t uh, the, he's in the turret, but anyway. Then you basically got part of the side baskets that go on the side here, um, onto the turret assembly, which, oh no, it's not this kit, I'm telling you, it's another kit I got, I just bought a barrel for. Uh, then you've got the smoke discharges, again, where they fit, onto the turret, again, little handles, and uh, boxes and stuff. Again, onto the side bar, uh, the rear basket for the turret. 
Um, obviously, they I don't know whether they give you thread for the tow cable, but that's what they're suggesting to use. Uh, I'm guessing they give you a bit, piece of mesh as well to do the back of the basket around here. Uh, you got your side arms here uh, and the assembly for them up the top. Uh, shows you some of the accessories that need to go in on. Also gives you uh, some quite nice photos there of the actual built model and where those accessories are put, which is quite nice. Uh, on the back it just gives you a sprue layout. Pretty much same old basic as you usually get. Uh, got paint for no reason. Uh, painting and uh, decal uh, placements. Uh, you've got the British Army Iraq 2003. That, I'm guessing that's going to be just in the plain desert. Sand yellow, basically. They, they call it desert yellow anyway. And also you, you get the... Uh, the Bosnia, which 1995, which that is actually the UN version. Um, so that should be quite interesting. But I probably won't be doing that one. Um, as you guys know, I have a bit of a obsession for the old um, desert style vehicles, uh, the Abrams and, and what have you. Um, that seems to float my boat. I don't know why, it just does. Um, it's moulded in the sand colour. There's the upper hole. Uh, yeah, F FV 510 Warrior MVC, yeah. Uh, it doesn't say when it's produced though, but that's quite nice. Nice bit of detail. No flash on that really, just some, where it was obviously on a sprue of some description. Um, oh, there you go, there's some mesh, you get mesh there. Uh, in this bag, you've got the, the upper turret, you have the basket, some of the hatches, um, the rear hatch, <coughs> which as I said is a hydraulic um, hatch. There's a, oh, that's nice, there's a fire extinguisher there. Uh, the mantle, um, all the tools are separate, that's quite nice. I haven't really had a look at this kit properly. Towing hooks, the handles for um, one of the hatches, wherever that was. I've seen that somewhere. But that's quite, quite nice. Um, there's two screws in this one, plus poly caps. So you've got poly caps, you've got oblique side armour. Um, again, more. These are the light guards. Uh, again, more hatches, more tone hooks and stuff. You got the shovels, that's quite nice, that's separate as well. Um, it's a shame that they have to put them in more than one in a bag, but you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, some more upper deck, uh, the venting for the engine there, which as I said is a V8 Condor. Um, there's a road wheel there, but I think that's for the spares. That's one of the spares, I think. Um, this is quite a nice touch. We've got the machine guns here. Very nice, I like that. Um, I'm wondering whether you can put that in a rack. Anyway, yeah, I'm babbling now. Uh, that's quite nice. If you look at that, you can see it uh, there. The uh, viewport there is actually got a windscreen wiper on it. That's really nice detail. Um, again, there, there's another like towing hook style thing which is really well detailed, very nice. Very nice. This is actually quite a nicely detailed kit to be honest. I haven't really had a good look at this. So and then basically we've got two um identicals in here. Uh more stowage, uh the handles for some of the stuff, top of a pickaxe, so there's obviously a handle somewhere. Uh, there's ah, oh, it's a bit of thread, a bit of thread for the uh, tow cable. Uh, your road wheels and and um, and then your idlers and spr and sprocket there, uh, very nice. Again, some more side armour, 
I think that's where some of these jerry cans actually go on to. Um, but there is some nice detail in here. It's a little bit more detail than what I thought it would actually be, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's really nice. See that nice bit of detail in in there on the where the idle wheel sit in. Um, some spare tracks. To, to go on it, that's nice. If you look at the detail on the back, yeah, there, see, look, uh, you see it uh, there. I mean, there's no hook, there's no actual hole in the guide horn, but even so, it's still a nice touch. Still a nice touch. Um, I'm not going to open any of the bags, obviously. Then you have the two, the two tracks, which are obviously uh, rubber band tracks, and the lower hole, which has got a great big mark in it which I think is where it's been pulled off a sprue um, obviously when it's been cast uh, again it's quite a nice detail along there there's not a lot of detail on the bottom here um, but again quite nice um, then we also have the decals for it which you've got your um, UN ones there these ones, the chevrons, which is quite standard on most of the uh, desert vehicles, your Union Jacks, yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, that's basically what comes in the box. Um, all in all, it seems to be a pretty nice kit. What I will do is, when I do build it, I might do a build series for it, so you can see how it builds, and I can give you some, like, some information and, and, and pitfalls on it, uh, do's and don'ts maybe. Um, <clears throat> but I do have a few projects that I really want to finish. Um, as I say, I need to finish a few, so those will come first. But before the end of the year, or maybe by the end of the year, if not the start of next year, <laughs> I've got that many going that haven't been finished. Um, this will be the first one, and I'll probably will do a build series on it as well. So, um, I've jabbered on for God knows how long, guys. Um, probably way over 10 minutes. Um, but I did promise Peter that I'd do this for him. So, um, there you go, buddy. It's uh, it's a nice kit. It's you know, it's not it's not your dragon kit, which was the last 170 second scale I did, which was a pain in the but especially 170 second, there's just too many pieces for something like that. Um, and I've also, I was stupidly went out and bought before that. I bought out a 170 second scale. Um, it's got photo edge, quite a bit of it too. <laughs> Idiot. But anyway, um, as I say, this is going to be a later on in the year. I but I do hope to get onto it this year, starting next year. Thanks for listening to me jabber as usual, guys. Um, I'm enjoying all your work. Um, at the moment, I'm doing mostly automotive at the minute, uh, other than the box lock build, which I've just got to paint, as you guys know. Um, still got the scan one that to finish, but those will get finished this year. Um, and as I said, hopefully before this, if I've remembered, it'll be um, the shop card update. If not, it will come after this. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you later. Build strong. Bye-bye.